Hello, in this video we will be looking at Huffman coding. So what is Huffman coding? Well first of all, consider the following problem. This is a string. A string is a series of characters. Each character of this string is stored in a computer as an 8-bit value or byte. In total we have 20 characters and hence we have 20 bytes or 160 bits. Huffman coding is a way in which we can encode these bits in such a way that we can reduce the number of bits required to store the string. And it kind of makes sense intuitively. The string has only 10 unique characters, including the space character, and an 8-bit value can store up to 256 unique characters. So there is a lot of redundancy in these bits. So how do we perform Huffman encoding on this string? First of all, let's count how many times each of our unique characters appears and put them in a frequency table, like so. Here we have the characters in the left column, including the space, and how many times it appears, the frequency. In total, we have 20 characters, so the sum of the frequencies must be 20. The table has been ordered so that the highest frequency is on top. Next, we add in a third column, which we'll call the code. This code column will be the bits allocated to represent the character. In order to generate a Huffman code, we apply an algorithm, which starts with taking the two smallest frequencies, here at the bottom of the table, corresponding to the characters O and capital T. We go ahead and merge them. We add the frequencies together, so the original frequencies were 1 and 1, so they add together to make 2. And then the code is updated with 0 and 1, where 0 is allocated to the top character, and 1 is allocated to the bottom character of the merged characters. We then resort the table if needed, which we do need to do here, since the merge frequency is now not in the correct place. So we go ahead and sort. Notice how the merge characters were put to the top of the block of frequencies with frequency 2. So even though they all have the same frequency, the two characters with a code are sorted at the top. And so as a rule, we sort by frequency first, and then by code. So frequency first, and then by the code. And sort by code, I mean the character block with the longest code word goes to the top. We'll see more of this in action later. Then continue to merge the lowest frequency characters, here G and N, combining their frequencies and adding zero to the top character code and one to the bottom character code. We then go ahead and sort. In this case, the frequencies for the blocks O, T and G, N are the same, as well as their maximum code length. So we're not sorting the actual code by value, we're sorting the code by length. So both these blocks, O, T and G, N, have a frequency of 2 and a maximum code length of 1. Therefore, their sort order does not matter in the Huffman code. We then continue merging our table. So here T and R are at the bottom with the lowest frequencies. Their frequencies are merged, so 2 and 2 becomes 4. And then the code 0 is added to the top character T and 1 added to the bottom character R. And so we simply continue this process. And then here we reach an important step. Here, the lowest frequencies are a mixture of blocks, one with a single character H and no code, and one with two characters G and N with one code each. In this case, we still merge the character frequencies, so two and two will become four. But we prepend a zero to the codes of the first block containing the G and N, and prepend a one to the code in the second block containing the H. So the zero goes into the first block where G and N were, and it was prepended to the existing code. H did not have a code, and so we simply fill that in with the code we wish to place, and because that block was on the bottom, it gets a one. And now we have an interesting situation. We have a new block with a frequency of four containing the characters G, N, and H, with codes 00, zero for G, 0, 01 for N, and 1 for H. And again, this block needs to be sorted, and we can use our second sorting rule again, since there is already a block with the same frequency 4, containing the T and R. But now we see that the block at the bottom, G, N and H, has a maximum code length of 2. So there is at least one character in that block 
which has a code with two characters. And so this takes higher priority than the other block with the frequency four and a max code length of one. We then continue our algorithm. And you'll see here now, our bottom two mergers do not have the same frequency, but it still follows the rule that they'll be selected because they have the lowest frequencies. Merge, prepend the appropriate zero and one, and then sort, identify the lowest frequencies, merge, prepend the codes, sort. And now you'll notice we're at the point now where we've used all the single characters at least once. So the rest of the algorithm will just be sorting blocks, merging the blocks and prepending zeros and ones in the appropriate place. So watch what happens here when we merge these two blocks. You'll see that the codes on the right, the top block will be prepended with a zero and the bottom block will be prepended with one. Then sort, pick the bottom two, merge, prepend codes, sort. And then we go ahead with our final merger with prepending the codes and we're done. We now have a Huffman code table that we can immediately use for encoding. We can replace the character S with three bits, zero, 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 the character space with zero, zero, one, the character I with zero, one, zero, etc. And so compared to our original string, where each character took eight bits of data to represent, you can see that from the Huffman table, the most a character needs to be represented is four, minimum is three. And so this will take much less memory than the original string did. But before we go ahead and do the encoding on our string, let's take a look at a more commonly used visualization of Huffman coding, the familiar Huffman tree. And here it is. The tree is reminiscent of an upside down acacia tree. In that at the top, we have a root and at the end of each branch, we have the leaves. The connections between them are called nodes. The blue numbers which sit inside each node are the frequencies that that node carries down. So at the root, we have the full frequency of 20 and on the left, 12 and on the right, eight. That is to say the sum of the frequencies for the characters S, space, I, O and T is 12 and the sum of the frequencies for G, N, H, T and R is eight. When we do the decoding, we'll be traveling down the branches with the highest frequency more frequently. You'll notice that when we move left from a node, there is a zero and when we move right, there is a one. These numbers come from the code that we calculated in the Huffman code table previously. And so to appreciate the Huffman tree, watch what happens when we decode the Huffman code 010. So first we take the path zero, then one, then zero, and we end up at a leaf containing character I. And we can do this for all codes. If we have more bits to decode, we simply start back at the root and follow the branches again until we hit the corresponding leaf. So the Huffman tree is an excellent visualization of the Huffman code. Now let's go ahead and encode our original string. So if we look at our original string, Remember it was 20 characters long and occupied 20 bytes or 160 bits of memory. It consists of 10 unique characters, including a space. In the UTF-8 encoding, the characters are encoded with the 8-bit values as shown. And so together, our string looks like this. That's all 20 characters of the string, occupying 160 bits. Now let's re-encode our string by re-encoding the individual characters using our Huffman code. So let's swap it out. And you can see here a massive difference in the number of bits needed per character. When we look at the string which has been encoded with our Huffman code, we can immediately see that it is shorter and it only takes 64 bits instead of 160, or 40% of the previously encoded string using the UFT8 encoding system. Now, how do we actually decode this data back into a string? So this is our encoded string using our Huffman code. Well, to decode it, we start to traverse the bits and the tree at the same time. 
So the implementation may differ from computer to computer and from platform to platform, but it can be visualized as follows. So we start from the left of the string. We see that our first bit is zero. So we take the left path from the root. Next bit is one. So we take the right path from this node. The next bit is one again. So we take the right path from this node. The next bit is one. So we take the right path again from this node. And what you'll see is that we've ended up at the character T. So we've gone, gone from our root to a leaf containing a character using these first four bits. This code then corresponds to the character T, which we can then decode out. We then cross out those bits and we start again from the next bit. So we've reset our tree. The next character is one. And so we take a right from the root node. Next character is zero, so we take a left. Next character is one, so we go right. And then, as you see, we've ended up at a leaf again, which contains the character H. We can then extract that character H. And if you look closely at the Huffman tree, you'll notice that we'll never encounter a bit stream that results in no character. Every possible route a binary number can take ends in a leaf. It should be noted here, however, that one corrupted bit can potentially destroy the subsequent decoding if all of the leaves do not lie on the same level, which is very common with Huffman code tree. And so we need to make sure that we don't have any errors in our bit stream. Back to the string. Since we've successfully decoded a character, we go ahead and cross out those bits and we would start again at the next character and continue until we have exhausted all characters, which would give us our original string. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like or dislike. And if you did like this video, hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with more videos like this.